welcome to what was the Grand Central Railway Station in the middle of Manchester. This is the third event that we've done. This is the Late Break Show on Tour, Manchester Tour. And we've filled this with an eclectic variety of cars, basically bringing the playlists of the YouTube channel, this channel, to life. And, um, and we've got a bit of everything. On stage here, we've got the brown shares, Colin Furs, the internet inventor, world record holder, eccentric friend of mine. He's gonna be in the chairs later. But let's go and have a look at some of the cars. So I've had to bring, obviously it's it's my channel, I've had to bring some cars here. Mine are probably the least shiny cars here, apart from that one. We've got my wife's Jimny, my Beetle, obviously my first car. If you have heard about the, the new playlist we're gonna do called Generation Flex, where we encourage young people who are interested in cars, who are interested in tinkering. My friend Miles has brought his first car, the DeLorean. Uh, the daily driven DeLor DeLorean here, um, which I love because not all the cars have to be perfect to be on show. Every car here tells an interesting story. In fact, let's go this way. Car caves. We've got some lovely cars here from some of the car caves that we featured on the channel. And we've got Paul Harding, who's come up from uh, Basingstoke, who's got these three, four, in fact, cars. 996, 911, the Corvette engined M3 E36, the R32 engined Mark II Golf base model, and his transporter, which is lovely. And then we've got Vernon Hibbard here, with his 4x4 modified Panda, and his modern Panda Cross. He couldn't bring all 36 Pandas that he's got, so he just brought two. We've got Richard here, the car cave here with a beautiful repurposed um, Defender Ambulance motorhome. And is, I mean, probably the nicest Mini that I've ever seen here again, supporting. Immediately, come here, come this way. We've got the electric 2CV. This is what we tried to do, right? A real automotive pick and mix. Electric 2CV next to an absolutely lethal <laughs> Postman Pat Van. Pat's got no excuse for being late. This is a, uh, a nitrous injected uh, 500cc Husqvarna motorbike engine. It's a drag cart. I've seen it drive. It does 150 miles an hour, rather him than me. Tom Hazard, who's brought this along. We've got this next to the little car company, Aston Martin DB5 Junior, No Time to Die 007 edition. Again, this is it's one of its public debuts, I think. Very, very special car, um, half scale. I'm not that tall, I mean, I'm fairly tall. Next to a very large car, um, a Lincoln Town car, low rider. And this is what we wanted to do on the Late Break Show. This, with a bit of this, with a bit of this. This is my friend David Rowe, who's brought along his Pikes Peak Audi uh, Quattro. He did take it to Pikes Peak as a privateer. I was there when he drove this car. And then we've got people like Mark Todd, who just happened to have the world's most powerful Aston Martin, 2,800 horsepower, street legal, treaded tires. I've driven it. If you've watched the channel, the episode, I've driven it. And it's just fantastic to have a car like this in a space like this. That's the Figaro. It's my wife chops this Figaro. I spent too long on it in the last two days. This is a genuine X moonshine, moonshine running um, Dodge Coronet Hemi. Amazing history to this car, and that's the thing, these cars are more than meets the eye often. This looks quite plain for a muscle car. This has history. Richard Petty built and uh, tweaked this engine. It's, this is a stunning piece of history. And then behind you, have got the world's fastest shed. Of course we have. Of course we've got the world's fastest shed, and it's, yeah, it is. It's a V8 4.2. It's, it's, it's Audi, I think it's Audi S4 running gear. Um, incredible, incredible, right? So over here, I mean, I'm just admiring the windows. If you like architecture, this is a, just a gorgeous building. Projects of the people. This is the part of, this was born out of lockdown and isolation, really. We encourage people to send in little two minute videos of their own vehicle, um, why they own what they own, why it turns them on, what they're doing. And this whole area is that. Just a slice of what people are into, what makes them tick. So we've got everything, V8 TR7, 
an immaculate Volvo 9 series, Mark II Escort four door, Daihatsu Hijet that's done the Mongol rally. You can't, you, you can't do it, you can't, we, I can't talk about all of them, but needless to say, we've spaced them out so that people can, can, can distance, have a good look, vid take some pics and videos. Look at that BMW over there. Oh, look at it. What's in this, in this and Bluebird? God, I've not seen one of those for a while. And that's a daily driven Jag XJS V12. I know that. The guy's had it a long time. Not many people drive a V12 every day anymore. What with the price of fuel and all. So that's projects of the people. Let's go over here. We're going to be making our way over to the, uh, the launches area, new cars, electric and piston, uh, and some continuation cars. This gives you an idea of, so that's, a, that's an, um, an LB STR, so a Lister Bell Stratos, a replica of a Lancia Stratos, actually better than an original homologation Stratos. Probably one of my favorite colors of any car ever. Um, so photographic. Come around here, we go past, well, actually, got, I think we've got five Jimneys here at this event, five new Jimneys. Um, and these ones are heavily modified. These are probably the most modified Jimneys in the country. Um, and they are fantastic. They've got a bit, a bit of overlanding, a bit of camping, showing what you can do with a tiny amount of space in a car like a Jimny. In fact, if you get to watch a, another YouTuber's channel, watch Geordie Jimny. He does some great Jimny related material. Um, there's a Jimny commercial. That one's a commercial one. So this is the launches. This is the launches area of the Late Break Show. So new cars, not all new cars, ones that we've selected that we think are quite interesting and intriguing, uh, both sensible and maybe not so sensible. So we've got things like the Skoda Enyaq, the Isuzu D-Max Arctic Trucks Edition. This car is, is only just come out. This is the first one. This is pre-production, actually. Everything from this to like a Rolls-Royce Wraith, which people don't get a chance to see very often. You know, beautiful fixed head coupe. The Morgan CXT, bonkers overland Morgan. What a great idea for a project. Um, thanks to Jeep uh, for bringing three different generations. You've got the 80th anniversary Wrangler, which is on sale, but you've got the old CJ and the Willis, of course, the World War II era Willis. And then behind Phil, the cameraman, We've got some of the sort of heavy hitters of the EV world at the moment. Ionic 5, which still, I'm not bored of looking at it. It's still fantastic. The Kia EV6. And actually Kia have kindly brought along another couple of cars. The Pro C GT, which is recently faced and tech lifted. Uh, this doesn't look very interesting, but this was Top Gear's reasonably priced car. And I think this exact car was the one that Tom Cruise set the lap record in. It looks normal until you get in and you realize it's got a celebrity resistant roll cage in it. Look. Hello. Yeah, so this was the car that um, Top Gear had as their reasonably priced car. I think putting on a show um, when you're an amateur like we are is always a challenge, but putting on a show in a year like 2021, it definitely comes with its own challenges. And this is, like I say, the first time we've ever done an indoor show. But this space in Manchester is just is so wonderful and very car friendly. And going into winter, we just thought, let's try it. Let's try it. Anyway, coming out of the launch car area, new Mercedes S-Class, right next to a Mercedes Actros truck, which uh, is so much fun to sit in. As a non-track driver, I find that very exciting. Um, Coming around here, oh look, there's, there's a Polestar 1 and a Polestar 2. Polestar 1 is a bit of a unicorn. Right, over here, this is another specials area. So people that have got interesting projects that they've brought along. This is a combination of new cars, old cars, heavily modified cars, a real broad brush. I mean, just looking here, we've got Alpha, Alpha GT Junior next to, look at the, under these lights, look at the chameleon paint on that TVR, isn't that, that's, that is just... I remember at the time, I reckon I think the paint was about 1200 quid a litre. But look at it, every angle. One minute it's brown, then it's crazy purple, then it's ravey orange. Stunning. And we work our way back here. Good few modified Japanese um, cars and, and a completely standard, it's white, it's over there, completely standard. 
unmolested Toyota Celica GT4 on its three spokes. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot because there were too many people around it. I've got to say a big thank you. I've got to say a massive thank you to Bentley who kindly brought along their 2003 Le Mans car. The continuation, this is brand new, the Bentley Blower Zero. So it's based on a 1929 Bentley Blower, but brand, brand new. And then their, their Bentley Flying Spur Art Car, the Unifying Spur, I think it's called. Right, follow me, follow me. That's my podcast partner in crime, Richard Porter's Heritage Edition, one of the last of the old defenders. Not the uh, you'd know, so he's brought that along. He just wanted free parking. That's all he wanted. This, not to be confused with a Ford Escort, not a product of Ford. This is the MST Mark I. Come around here because it's quite busy. I can, I can, I'm really proud to say this is, the, this is the public first public outing for the MST Mark I. This car was finished about two days ago. And um, it is a thing of wonder. This is a brand new car, completely brand new with a new registration look it's a 71 plate you can order one of the either a shell for one of these and build it yourself or you can order a turnkey car rally spec normal road spec or anything in between you might have seen the video that i did on the mark ii well this is the mark one over here is some losers cars uh, dodge charger japanese taxi but, but, but look, just want to show you some soft furnishings. Uh, I didn't bring the Allegro here. I didn't have the energy and uh, I just, I just had, with organizing this show, but we did bring the finished interior for said Allegro sleeper. So this has been carefully stitched by that man there who's on his phone, Craig Hughes, who's done this amazing upholstery for the Allegro. We've got the District Line London Underground fabric, which I managed to find with brown alcantara harder to find it these days than you realize not the most popular color of alcantara and i just think they look spot on i can't wait to see them inside the agro lovely tones earthy tones of 70s british leyland i, I have to do a really big th um, shout out there's lots of people i need to thank at le le least of all the people who um not least of all the people who have actually bought a ticket and turned up this car requires a shout out to Roop. You might have watched the episode where I went and met him with his RS500. This is the ex Andy Rouse BTCC car. This is a works um, British touring car. I know he's, he flew back from work in Geneva to bring this here last night. He hasn't had any sleep. Thank you Roop for bringing a car like this. Cars of this kind of caliber are what make the show what it is. Without any of these cars, it wouldn't be anything. Follow me. Look, <laughs> it's just, I've always been fascinated with radio control cars, as you might know, but RC drifting is just fascinating. RC drifting and RC crawling are like the two sort of growing genres of scale models. And this is one of those disciplines like real drifting, which looks far easier than what it is. But when I saw Drift Manji, who I must say a big thank you to for, for the final hour, pulling all the stops out with his gang and organizing this amazing diorama. So yeah, I have to say thank you to Wayne over there and uh, Drift Man GRC for just bringing this amazingly detailed track. I just wanted to show people like this because even if you don't want to go and buy a car like this, it is fascinating and uh, to watch. I absolutely adore it. And it's healthy, right? We've had a rubbish year and a half. It's nice to have a bit of fun. Oh, special car. Ineos brought along the new Grenadier, a car which is quite divisive. Uh, a car which has actually not been seen in public much and a really special thing um, actually so great to have a car like that and great to be supported by people like Alpine again a car you don't see every day you'll see 50 Porsches to every Alpine so it always feels special to see a car like that um, and what a colour what a colour We've got a couple of exhibitors like Motive Culture and the Anvil Workshop here. Who doesn't like a bit of automotive art? It's good, isn't it? Hey, yeah, you all right? I will come and say hello to you properly at some point. I promise I will. 
and the Anvil Workshop. Some quality leather goods and stuff. I really, I, I, again, I need to, have you seen this seat? It's gorgeous. Who doesn't like a bit of Mexican blanket weave? I had an AMC pacer with an interior like that once. So we sort of get to the end of the clock, the clock end of the show. And again, we've, we've had to space the cars out sort of to make them COVID friendly. Also let people kind of walk around and film them. Uh, we've got Golf, Golf G60, Rally, Porsche 914. This is owned by a lady called Julianne. I featured this car in my first journalist job um, and she's got the edition of it, I think. I featured it in 2001 and it's only just occurred to me that that was 20 years ago and she still owns the car. I should have bought a 914 20 years ago. Foolishly, I didn't. Rare cars, really rare cars, like I said before, cars that you might not know much about. Cars like that, the VW Iltis, that is the godfather of the Audi Quattro. You didn't know that, but it started off as a military vehicle and the drivetrain of that ended up becoming the Audi UR Quattro. Variety. I love a bit of vehicular variety. Volvo 850R on air suspension. Next to a Mini, which is an absolute arse terror. This thing came in last night in the pouring rain. This is not a normal Mini. An amazing Clubman. Um, and a great build, a great, great build. Next to uh, the drummer from Queen, Roger Taylor. This was his Range Rover convertible. And thanks to Rockstar's Cars, thanks to Kieran at Rockstar's Cars for arranging for this to be able to come along today. Just think it's wonderful, personally. There's a Dodge Charger over there that's significantly better than mine. I'm not going to show you that. Not really, it's brilliant. When was the last time you saw one of them? Oh, a Nissan PAL. An engine swap Nissan PAL. This is, this is the problem is, is there's too many cars for me to... Look. Engine swap Nissan PAL. That's the engine it should have always had. I bet it goes like absolute stink. An old neighbour of mine had one of these. Not with that engine in. So there you go. Late break show, Manchester. Hopefully there's a car for everyone. It's inspiring. You look at cars you wouldn't maybe normally look at, but the, the other thing that I've tried to encourage people to do is to talk to the owners. There's always a story behind a project car. There's always a reason why people buy what they buy and whether they're interested in what they're into. And that's the most important thing. The people behind the cars are more interested in the cars a lot of the time. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show. Uh, I've actually got to get back uh, on stage and do a, a car pub quiz now with Richard Porter. So. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already to The Late Break Show, please subscribe. And if you're a Patreon to this channel, thank you so much for supporting us through Patreon. There's a link in the description below.